You know, one of the things I get asked the most often is, how can I afford to eat beef all the time? And, you know, I don't make a lot of money. I, I've, I've worked several jobs since I've been doing this channel. And for the most part, I've taken a downgrade in income. I did have a bit of a savings when I first moved here that got me along for a little while. But I mean, goodness, I'm a server right now. I, I'm doing in-room dining at a hotel. So it's not like I'm made of money. So how do I keep doing this? Put simply, I look for deals. I know when stakes go on sale at Publix. And I check the ads every week to look for other deals. You know, I find the places that serve the meats that I like to buy, and then I keep up with what their specials are going to be. Right now, for instance, Publix is running bone-in ribeyes for $8.99 a pound. Now, that's not the lowest price they usually run them for, but that's one of the lowest prices you're going to find. And since I'm getting a little low, I've probably got three or four weeks worth of ribeye from the Easter special in there, but I'm not going to have enough ribeye to last until next Labor Day. I eat a ribeye almost every day. I love the ribeye for its fat to protein ratio, and I love it for the flavor. I love it for the size. Everything about the ribeye appeals to me. I also try to buy whole cows every now and then, at least two or three times a year, and I've only done it once this year. I'm looking to buy another one in July, and I plan to buy another one before Christmas. And that's how I make sure I do a bit of a more nose-to-tail type of eating. I mean, three whole cows a year is pretty good for one guy sharing with his wife and kids. And I'm the only one who eats all meat. It comes down to trying to save money any way I can. I'm looking for the special prices, but at the same time, I don't want to sacrifice for bad quality meat. I don't eat a lot of burger because I'm not really, a, I'm not re really very trusting of the meat packers out there and how they're cutting their burger. I find that a lot of them are using natural flavoring and I know from reading the FDA website that natural flavoring if it comes from an animal product has to state specifically what it is. So the one thing I do know is it's not natural meat flavoring whatever it is. So when I see natural flavoring on a meat product I avoid that like the plague and I can tell the difference as soon as I bite into one if it's not natural. But the best way I do is I, I, I look for the specials. I mean, that's what it comes down to, is finding the best deals I can find on meat and then buying them in quantity. Uh, I wrap my own meat so that it'll stay longer in my freezer. And I buy whole cows, which even when I buy whole cows, because I buy a really high quality meat, I buy only grass fed, grass finished, and I buy from one rancher that I trust. And I still spend about eight to nine dollars a pound overall on the entire cow. And heck, that's what I just paid for ribeye. Now these are grain fed animals from a store. So I don't know the rancher that raised these. I don't know how well they did. I don't know if they didn't use a lot of antibiotics and if they avoided giving them vaccines that they may or may not need. Unfortunately, those are the choices we have to make sometimes. And you know, after I left Publix today, I went by Sam's Club to pick up a few other things that I needed for the house. And I noticed they had chuck roast on sale. And at Sam's Club, when they do chuck roast on sale, they do the, the chuck steaks for the same price per pound. So you're not paying more to have them cut into steaks. So I figured, well, I'll just buy some steaks because, you know, I haven't tried them in the Gray O Chef Maker. And I thought it would be a good idea to share with you whether or not cooking a chuck steak in the Dreo Chef Maker is going to work out well because it is a good way to save a little bit of money. At $5.68 a pound they come out almost half the price of even my on sale ribeyes and they have a tremendous fat profile too. A lot of protein and a lot of fat in one piece of meat. It's not quite as sweet and juicy as the, the ribeyes are but it's a lot better than just having regular old hamburger meat, that's for sure. I like the idea of being able to have some chuck roast or chuck steak. I do like chuck roast also. The problem I found with chuck roast is when you slow cook a chuck roast, all the fat winds up in liquid form around the meat. You lose a lot of the weight of the meat and you're not actually eating as much as what you bought. So that's the only drawback I have with chuck roast, although I still do love a good chuck roast. But today, we're gonna do a chuck steak in the Dreo Chef Maker. Give me a moment to finish packing this meat up and I'll dig right into that. 
there that didn't take too long now i just got to put these in the freezer and we're going to get some of this chuck steak ready that i bought all right so i'm going to get the chuck steak ready using some of my favorite redmond real salt the only salt that i use mine right here in the united states in utah from an ancient seabed so that you don't get a whole bunch of modern day shipping pollutants into your salt and boy does it taste good it really just makes this meat pop I'll tell you how you can get some at the end of the video, so be sure to stick around for that. I use the kosher salt on my meat because I can see it better than the fine salt so that I know how much I'm putting on there. Sometimes I tend to put a little too much if I'm not careful. It is a thicker grade of salt. It's not as thick as the coarse salt, but it does a great job of getting this meat ready. All right, let's throw it in the chef maker and see how it does. Now the hardest thing is probably going to be getting this probe in nice and straight. So let's see if we can do that in this very loose meat. I'm going to find a nice thick part here. This meat is probably about three quarters of an inch thick, which is a little thin for trying to cook steak in the chef maker. I'm going to take it up to chef mode. Beef. We may have to use the ribeye setting. Yeah, because there's no chuck steak setting. Ribeye and chuck eye would be a very similar cut of meat, so I'm gonna go with that since it's close to the chuck eye as well. And I'm gonna set it for medium rare, sous vide flavor. And there we go, it's calculating, getting ready to go, reminding me to fill the water tank. It's already got water in it. So we're gonna let that roll. And I'm going to salt the rest of this meat because I'm going to put this in the refrigerator for tomorrow or the next day. And that way it'll be pre-salted. That'll actually give it some time to really soak into the meat too. Bring out some of the flavor. Alright, after just over 8 minutes, it came on and told me the estimated time now is 31 minutes. So I'm hoping it's going to be pretty close to that because it's going to need some time to properly cook. And my only concern is the thickness of the steak. I may have to buy my own chuck roast and cut them a little thicker so I can really do this right. But I wanted to be able to test and see what I buy from the store. Would that work right out of the package? Because Sam's Club doesn't cut to order and they have the best prices on chuck roast. So I wanted to see how this would come out. But I can buy their chuck roast and cut it myself. So that's an alternative as well. It's just not real easy to cut a chuck roast unless it's really cold but not frozen. So just working out the best deal I can to figure out how we can save money and have delicious meat. All right, I'm here back at one minute left. Let's see how this baby comes out. And once again, when you use the sous vide cooking mode, I'm told by the manufacturers of the Dreo Chef Maker that you do not have to let the steak rest. It's ready to cut into immediately. By the way, it did take the entire time that it said that it was going to take. So I like that it's getting really good at measuring the time. It's been 39 and a half minutes. Now sometimes it does take a little longer than that last one minute says, but I'd rather it be like this than count down real fast. All right, first impression looking at it out of the air fryer is that it is cooked properly. I like that, that it's nice and crispy looking. Gotta get off this plate here. All right. All right, it's definitely cooked all the way through, and it is a nice medium rare, even on the edge. Well, it's still not as tender as a ribeye, but I really didn't expect it to be as tender as a ribeye, especially since I've been cooking all my ribeyes in sous vide mode lately too. It is a tougher piece of meat, but this came out really good. You've definitely got to chew it, but it's not something I would avoid eating. Very tasty. And I love that I'm not leaving all that delicious fat at the bottom of the crock pot where you wind up leaving it when you cook a chuck roast. Of course you could save and reuse that rendered fat but it's nice to be able to get it with the meat you're eating i'm still interested to see how it does with a thicker piece of meat would this replace my ribeye obviously not but 
this is a very good option for somebody who's trying to save a little money and wants to be able to eat steaks every day like I do on a diet that most people say is too expensive to live on. Well, again, I don't find it to be too expensive, but I do shop very carefully for good prices and I do look for good quality meat. I also save a lot of money in other areas that I used to spend money on that thanks to this way of eating, I don't spend money on. Smoking, vaping, drinking, junk food, buying crap from the store when I stopped to buy gas, throwing food away. We used to throw so much food away when we would have a lot of spoilage. We'd make food and we'd have leftovers. When I make steak, I don't have leftovers. I eat every bit of it. I don't have to buy supplements like I used to. I do use a couple of supplements, but I used to use a ton of supplements and now I don't buy any of that stuff. Just a few things that I find that help me a little bit and I'm still researching other ones to see which ones are actually going to do me any good or are they just more hype. It's hard to tell these things initially, but I've been taking magnesium lately and I find it to be real useful. I know I feel really good lately and there was a point at the beginning where I was really craving that magnesium, but I'll be talking about that in another video. But meanwhile, I don't spend as nearly as much as I used to on supplements and I don't have to go see my doctor unless I really want to maybe to get some blood work done you know because a lot of times you if you have any type of insurance you can go see your doctor and it's a lot cheaper than just doing one of those online lab kits I feel healthy and I don't need to go see the doctor even more importantly they don't seem to be able to do anything for me when I don't feel good but all in all I'm able to make it work on a make it work on a very tight budget and I feed my whole family with my income so if I can do it, you can do it. Chef Maker can help because it can make your cheaper cuts nice and soft with that sous vide mode to where they're actually tender enough to eat. I mean, there have been chuck steaks I've tried before that I could not chew through. This, I can chew. So another steak made easy by the Dreo Chef Maker. Another option that might save you a little bit of money and you can keep eating a carnivore diet that's gonna make you look and feel the way you've always wanted to. That's it for this one, guys. I'll see you next time. If we pay extra, could we maybe get some grease or fat?